This video will be a quick introduction to the workflow for PIX4D. There are a lot of options in this program and as you get into it you'll start to see a lot of the different uh, the different options and how you might want to use those. But the basic workflow is fairly straightforward. I talked about the file management for this uh, which is if you haven't watched that yet make sure you go back and watch that before you get started so you don't start losing where all your, your uh, output files and everything are going to. But I'll run through it here real quick. Uh, and get this thing going. We're going to get a new project here. I call this the same name as the file folder that I have the photos in so that I can keep track and I can match everything up. So I'm going to call that 04282017. I'm going to call it RGB since that's what I used on the Sequoia and it was done at 100 feet. So I'm going to call them the same thing. This is a new project. I'm going to go to next. It's asking me to asking me to drop the pictures in here next. So I'm going to go ahead and find those pictures. And like I said, I have already copied those over onto the uh, uh, the solid state drive or the hard drive on this computer. You can see I have them under the same name there. And now I'll have to come in here and I'll select these photos. By the way, one of the things that I always do before I or as I'm importing these files onto the hard drive of the computer is to make sure that the photos are are good. Just a general overview of the photos uh, is a good idea. Pix4D, if there's some bad pictures in there, it will usually figure that out and get rid of them. But the problem is if you keep all those in there and then you run it and you, it doesn't come out very well, now the first thing you need to do is go back and start pulling those pictures back out. So it can it just saves a step on the troubleshooting and I'd rather pull the pictures out that are obviously bad. And what I mean by that are pictures that have a lot of sun glare in them or they have very low contrast. Um, they're a blurry picture maybe as you were rotating or yawing the, the drone or something like that. Something that's just obvious that it's not going to be able to pull out a lot of good uh, points to be able to try and match. I get rid of those uh, right off the beginning. So once you've pulled them all into there, you can see it brought 263 images in here. I'm going to hit next. It will start looking at all those, and now it's going to come over here, and it came up with a custom accuracy over here uh, based on the camera uh, that we're using here uh, for the uh, the Sequoia. And uh, another thing that I always double check is that these lat longs and coordinates are actually changing. You can see how they've changed in there. I've run into the problem with some cameras uh, that the numbers don't change a lot and it might not have a good GPS reception and it keeps the old GPS coordinates and that's common with some of the uh, the GPS units for cameras so for example for my Nikon I run into that problem if I don't let it, it uh, time in for three or four minutes before I start taking pictures it'll keep the same lat longs for several photos and if it does that your best thing to do is just clear out the uh, geolocation um, speaking of which Pix4D doesn't have to have the geolocations and the geotags in order to make this uh, to make this happen. Uh, it's fairly interesting to run them, run photos with them geotagged, and then clear them out and run it again to see what happens. Um, I've had situations where, as the photos are are uh, geotagged, uh, they they uh, are fairly symmetrical as far as the actual object and if you don't geo label or locate them sometimes and use them without it might torque the uh, the picture a little bit or twist the picture or bend the picture around uh, but it's pretty interesting to uh, run them with uh, with both all right so that's all looking good it has a sequoia called up it automatically will pull up the bebop camera for you right there when you uh, when you run this which is a nice the nice part about uh, pix4d and pairing up with uh, with Parrot here. We'll go to next. Um, it'll come in here just talking about the coordinate system. You can just hit next out of there. And now you need to select what you want to do. Um, in a lot of cases, like for this one that has a lot of pictures in it and a lot of data, a lot of times what I'll do here is I'll come down and do this 3D map with low res to start out with. It'll be a much faster product, usually uh, you know, sometime somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 times faster production, um, and you'll, you'll uh, get the solution. With this computer, though, again, it's going to still be pretty fast, so I'm just going to start from the very beginning and go to 3D map 
maps, which gives me absolutely everything. Again, you can play around with these different things. If you just want to want to model something small uh, that you are working on, you can use the uh, uh, the 3D modeling. But typically, I use the maps. Um, the ag multispectral, something you might use during the research phase of this, where you are going to do some sort of agricultural work with the Sequoia sensor. And in those cases, you might want to use uh, one of those in order to get your NDVIs and some other things uh, out of it. All right, so once we get to that point, um, I'm going to hit finish. It's going to take me to the processing page. And this is a fairly uh, a good page to take a look at because this really is starting to show you what the actual flight path of the aircraft looked like. Now, in this case right here, you can see this wasn't using PIX4D capture or anything. I basically just went out and I was trying to fly a manual uh, profile uh, to see how that worked and to try and get this uh, this whole area mapped out. So once you get it uh, to that point, get ready to go. Um, you can just hit start on it and the program will start cooking away uh, and you can watch the progress as it goes uh, goes through these. And this will probably be done in about two to three hours. I suspect it'll be done with this one. We won't wait that long.